unreal. Never gonna get it again though. At least I don't think that's ever gonna happen again. Just and that's back. Promise it. I'll look for it, man. <laughs> no, I'm. I'm just... <laughs> Are we gonna be okay, Grady? <laughs> Why can't any of my favorite players just stay? What is wrong with this team? What's going on guys? It's Fuzzy. This is not MLB recap. We are going to save that for later on in the day because I need to dedicate an entire video to what just happened. An absolutely just fantastic way to start my morning. One of my favorite players in all of baseball, a friend of mine in fact. You guys remember I was on Bauer Bites with John Boy, Trevor Bauer, and Mike Clevenger. We had a great conversation. I have Mike Clevenger's number. Um, I was... Uh, I knew that this was coming. I really knew that this was coming. But the fact that we did not get the return that I was expecting, that's why we have to make this entire video. We're not gonna have any cuts today. If I fumble over my words, if I stammer or anything like that, so be it. I want you guys to see a true baseball fan react to something that is kind of devastating because the Indians are not a bad team in 2020. We just lost our second best starting pitcher, but we're in first place. I can't have one day, I can't have one day in which I just enjoy being a Cleveland baseball fan. I don't even know if we're going to be the Indians one day. I don't know if Francisco Lindor is going to be on the team the next day. Then we trade Corey Kluber, Trevor Bauer, now Mike Clevenger. If you're on the Indians and you're a starting pitcher or you're just any Indians player in general and your name ends in ER, as evident by my tweet this morning, you are going to get traded. Clint Frazier, Corey Kluber, Bauer, Clevenger. Who's next? Bieber. B-I-E-B. E-R. All right, so let's talk about the trade before I get just so caught up because the Padres are scooping up the entire league that is known as Major League Baseball. So San Diego, let's go ahead and break it down real quick because I'm sure some of you, actually most of you should know these two names. They get 29-year-old ace Mike Clevenger. He has a combined 2.97 ERA since 2017, 17, 18, 19, and 20. That is pretty much three and a half seasons of baseball in which he has been dominant. He's actually top five in ERA plus if you're dating back to 2017. So Mike Clevenger is a stud. Even though Chris Paddock is on the Padres, you now have a new number one. He is going to show Chris Paddock exactly how to become an ace. And I'm super jelly of all you Padres fans. First of all, the weather's nice. Second of all, you have Fernando Tatis Jr. And third, you will now be able to compete with the Dodgers for a championship this year. Now, I don't know if they're as complete as the Dodgers, but they have done everything possible. Possible. We'll talk about the other trades in MLB recap. But again, Mike Clevenger is a stud. He had a 12.1 strikeouts per nine in 2019. The guy is electric. I promise you, I know he has the long hair and all of the antics outside of baseball, but I promise you, you are going to love watching him pitch because he cares more about baseball than anything else. You might be able to call him selfish. You could get away with that, and I would understand because of the whole police act, Clevenger, COVID situation. But I think deep down, he is a genuine guy who just wants to pitch, surf, and that's it. Uh, I will say the one thing that I want you guys to pay attention to if you are a Potters, Potters fan, see, I'm not going to edit that out. We're going to keep rolling. His walks have been an issue this year. He has a 4.4 walks per nine, and now it didn't hurt him in his first start against the Twins. I think he walked five different hitters, but he did not allow a single earned run. So he is that nasty. He can get out of it. So that is the biggest piece of the puzzle that the Padres got this entire trade deadline season is Mike Clevenger, their brand new ace. I cannot believe I'm saying that. Uh, I had a last supper with these guys. Jesus and his disciples has nothing on the last supper that Trevor Bauer, Mike Clevenger, John Boy, and I had this past spring training. So let's talk about, oh, also, before we talk about the Indians, they also got, talking about the Padres, 27-year-old outfielder Greg Allen. Nothing special. He has a 639 career OPS, but he can steal bags. He can play good defense, and he has a rocket for an arm. I think last year he had an outfield assist that was 100 miles an hour. So the guy can absolutely toss the white ball thing. All right, let's talk about what the Indians got. 23-year-old Josh Naylor. Now, I will say Naylor has a majestic swing. I really do dig it. But in 112 career games, he has nine home runs and a 720 OPS. That just doesn't make me excited. And on top of that, he's pretty much the left-handed Domingo Santana, who we already have. Someone that can, you know, kind of get the job done in the batter's box, but plays awful defense. And Naylor is a not 
He's not even average. He is a below average defender out there in left field. So I think that because of his age and the fact that they can project him getting better and anyone is better in the box when you compare them to Greg Allen and even Josh Luplo. So maybe this is going to be an upgrade just for the 2020 season. I don't know. So he is kind of the prize of this entire deal. Now Quantrill. Now he did start 2020 on a good note. He has a 2.6 ERA in 10 games. He only started one of those. So he is looking to be promising, especially with 18 strikeouts and 17.1 innings pitched, but he had a 5.16 ERA in 2019 as a starter. So I don't know if they're going to use him as a back end of the bullpen guy or if they're going to use him as a reliever. I would say that they would use him as a reliever because Tristan McKenzie, he's going to be solid. Zach Plesak is still on the team as of right now when I'm recording this. So rotation of Bieber, Carrasco, Savali, uh, Plesak, and Tristan McKenzie, that'll get the job done. So technically, if I'm being an unbiased Indians fan, you don't necessarily need Mike Clevenger, and adding someone like Naylor and Quantrill, it could be good. Now, the next player just doesn't make sense to me because I have never liked this guy. He hasn't done anything to me but the fact that Austin Hedges is the worst hitter of my entire life, I can't name one hitter, maybe Greg Allen, that is a worse off player in the batter's box than Hedges. But I guess he's great on defense. That's why he's still in the league. But Roberto Perez, Sandy Leon, Austin Hedges, all of these guys are defense first catchers. So I don't really understand this. I mean, the Padres did get Jason Castro from the Angels, so I think that's exactly why they wanted to unload Hedges. I don't know what happens to Francisco Mejia. So those are the three big league players that the Indians received in return. Let me catch my breath just a little bit. All right, let's talk about these minor leaguers that could spell bigger trouble for us Indians fans because there are a few shortstops. What does that mean? Francisco Lindor could be on the... <laughs> I'm not going to finish that sentence. So the Indians get number seven prospect, Gabriel Arias, or Arias, I don't know exactly how to say it. I will say in 2019, now this was only single A, so take it with a grain of salt. He had a 302 batting average with 17 home runs and 75 RBIs. I don't care what level of baseball you're talking about, that is still an excellent season. He's pretty good with the glove as well. I will say his swing does get a little bit long, so when you're facing guys that throw 100 miles an hour, that's not going to pan out. But the Indians do get a number seven prospect as well as number nine and 11. We'll talk about number nine real quick. Left-handed pitcher Joey Cantillo or Joey Cantillo. Again, I've never heard of these guys. So if I'm butchering their last name, I'm sure you guys will all correct me in the comment section down below. Through three levels uh, of 2019 or maybe all of his career in general, I just got the stats right now. He has a combined 2.51 ERA in 168 innings with an 11.8 strikeouts per nine. So I will say, look at the raw stats, both Gabriel and Joey actually kind of excite me. If this continues, I think the Indians are going to be fine projecting forward with starting pitchers, and maybe they have a replacement in Gabriel Arias or Arias. Now, if it's not going to be Gabriel, it's going to be the number 11 pot. See? I'm just, my brain is all over the place, but I'm not going to edit it out. This is what you get. This is raw fuzzy. Usually I edit these out, but I'm just going for it. Padres number 11 prospect, Owen Miller in 130 double A games back in 2019. He had 13 home runs and a 785 OPS and kind of okay. I mean, shaky defense at best. So considering the haul that the Indians got, it, it, it's not a normal haul. The only reason why you call it that is because of the number of players they got back in return. Two players in exchange for six different players. Josh Naylor, Cal Quantrill, Austin Hedges. Uh, you have Padres number seven through 11 prospect Gabriel Arias, left-handed pitcher Joey Cantillo, and then Owen Miller. And that's it. So we're going to go ahead and save the other Padres trades for MLB Recap because we still have a lot to break down. But I just wanted to dedicate an entire video to Clevenger because that dude gave a lot to the city of Cleveland. He put 100% effort into every single start. Um, he worked hard and just meeting him in person, I think that he's a good guy. I know that a lot of you guys have never met him, so the only thing that you get is... Mike Clevenger, who breaks the MLB protocols and other things that have happened throughout his tenure in baseball. So that's my feelings. I'm hoping that this can be a Grady Sizemore trade 2.0 in which we traded one of our best pitchers at the time, Bartolo Colon, in exchange for Cliff Lee, Brandon Phillips, and Grady Sizemore. All three of those guys were pretty 
um, I mean, they weren't well known at all. They were kind of low on the prospect rankings and they turned into all-stars, every single one of them. I think they won gold gloves. Cliff Lee won a Cy Young. Brandon Phillips won a gold glove. So did Grady Sizemore. He was in the home run derby. So that's all I'm expecting is to hopefully get some of these guys, just one of them, one of them to turn into a star. <sighs> Let me know what you guys think. Don't clown on me too much. I knew that this was coming. I should have been expecting it. But all I can say is um, hashtag pain. That's it. Love you guys. MLB recap coming out later. Stay safe.